very nice. I have to get out to Austin again. Oh. I got to get out of Austin <laughs> a little How more often. I've been there eight years. Yeah. But talk about this. On the outside, this seems like it's a big deal. Your first solo record with Union One is a solo project. Is it as big a deal for you? To me? Yeah. I can't even tell. You know, it's a strange thing that does to your ego after you've been doing band work for so long and you just used to being able to like kind of pass the buck uh, in any way to somebody else like not like blame them but just even like uh, am I excited I used to ask Derek that I go he said when somebody would say what do you think about this kind of music I go do I like that he goes oh no no <laughs> as you said I remember even thinking all the interviews with you guys with the three you would kind of interplay even in, in interviews with such a whole dynamic unto itself that was was unique so does this feel foreign even Doing this kind of thing by yourself? Uh, <clears throat> no, I mean doing it. Like I say, the right my my criterion for myself is really, I know what it is. So, actually, it really feels great doing it. I don't uh, outside of my own scruples, which are kind of stupid, and that's something where that's a whole other you know ball of wax there where you can't once again pass the buck on stage either. I can't say well some the drummer was dragging or whatever. It's just it's all me and. Then I, but then I realized that, like I just did, at three weeks of practicing by myself every day, pretty soon I start losing my tempo. I can't even tell what the notes sound like. I'm like just looking around for some feedback. Mm -hmm. you know? So it's, it gets pretty weird sometimes yeah. too. And uh, <clears throat> ironically then, the best, the best times with this right now are just, you know, I just it takes it way, way beyond where I can get in my living room uh, practicing if I can get in front of some people right now. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So talk about how excited you are that this all did work and you, it was you on your own and this is your music and it's your name on the thing. And Adam, I'm extremely <laughs> excited. <laughs> so excited, in fact, that right now as we're speaking, I'm sweating, but it's all it's staying inside. <laughs> and um, it's the sweat is building up. No, I'm, I'm uh -oh. really excited. I'm yeah. totally excited. It's a, it's a really, like I said, I don't even, I can't even tell how excited I mm -hmm. am because it's been, it's just, I've slain a lot of giants. To that's what I've always thought, you know. Uh, I guess it's kind of like, the, you know, uh, the little tailor, you know, like Mickey uh, going after the giant thing. Mm -hmm. So that's how records seem, you know. It just seems so improbable that you could make a record and somebody would put it out. For, for me, being from Phoenix, being in in a punk band where we were just spitting and and being idiots, you know, and trying to drive people out of the places we were playing, and then somebody wants to actually record that and you get it done, like we would come out here and record or whatever. This is the same kind of one of those, except for there was no, I've been trying to do this solo thing since about 96. Mm -hmm. And you know, on some level I gotten waylaid here and there. I was out doing a solo thing with, uh, when Eyes of Drift kind of popped up in my face. I met Chris uh, up in Seattle, hadn't seen him in years, and he said, why don't you, you won't do a band with me? And then Bud Gaw called, so I got sidelined there in 2001, but I was out touring solo trying to figure out how to, and he wasn't even trying to get a record out because I couldn't really get anybody to want to put it out. Mm -hmm. You know, really, it's like, <clears throat> oddly enough, uh, the, the meat puppets thing kind of works against you sometimes, and people are like, well, yeah, but you're, you know, the meat puppets is your main thing, or whatever, I'm like, no, my brother's in jail, or whatever, I'm not gonna be doing that right now unless he wants to do it, and, mm -hmm. and uh, so uh, I wouldn't have been able to do this if Pete hadn't uh, uh, asked me. You know, I didn't ask him. Mm -hmm. I was like, I, I didn't, I didn't, know, I didn't think to. I didn't know he had a record company. So. Mm -hmm. So when that all started coming together, what did that feel like to get in the studio and know this was actually going to be it after a couple of years? Of all right now, for me, it feels just just the best thing. It's the best thing there is. Mm -hmm. I just can't. I'm always always loved doing this, and as time goes on and things get, become. It seems like they, I've, of course, they've always been tenuous for sure, and it's always been thin ice. That's that's showbiz. But to be, you know, getting on in the business and been in it for a while, and you, it's it starts to seem even like more fragile. And mm -hmm. then so it's 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 super cool. It's like uh, what gives me, you know, self worth, and uh, <laughs> I don't know. Mm -hmm. It does. That's mm -hmm. what I do. <clears throat> I'm a shallow person. <laughs> Adam, do you need him to reiterate the question for you? you no, no. It's okay. Oh, yeah. Yeah, we'll make it work. Yeah. 
You talk about these songs because these songs are so wonderful and so. And you mentioned fragile. There's a, there's a beauty in a lot of these songs that you've had before, but <coughs> having the acoustic nature of it and the music on this, there's something kind of cool about being able to record that way. Now oh yeah, and, yeah. Know. I mean, my voice has always been, you know, a, a strange. It's an aluminum, uh, aluminum foil Fabergé egg. You know, it's it's just a really <clears throat> weird thing. My voice. It's never been a great voice or anything like that. And singing over electric instruments trying to do sweet harmonies the way I wanted to and float them over the, kind of get the, the, the nastiest guitars I could to, to, to still, you know, without being wrecking the vocals. It was hard, you know, it's always been hard. This is super easy to sing over the acoustic guitar, you know, and, and to, to get some nuance. The dynamics are, are, are much, much more flexible to me right mm -hmm. now. So. I think it serves these songs really well. I've recorded a number of these heavy band arrangements, or not so heavy, but just band arrangements electrically. <clears throat> this is the way, you know, that uh, that I wanted to do it with this record, and Pete wanted to do it this way, and we it actually turned out the way we wanted it to, and mm -hmm. uh, so that's that's a, a really cool thing too, because a lot of times you just kind of go with it. You you wish you. You know, it's okay. It's starting to look like this now. We set out to make this, like with. <clears throat> I tried to get Eyes Adrift to cut everything acoustically initially, or or at least let me use my little cheesy Fender Bronco or something. Mm -hmm. and, you know, it's like punk rock damage just made us get louder and louder in the studio with each pass until we were just, you know. Chris is like, I think I need two S SVT stacks now. Mm -hmm. it was... Is it? Weird to think to your fans now, do people maybe only know you from a certain kind of music or you hear this kind of thing? Are you nervous about that kind of thing? Is that a certain thrill that maybe people that were Me Puppets fans are gonna pick this up and think, wow, maybe they didn't see your solo shows and this will be like a, an awakening in lots of ways? <laughs> well, I hope they like it. You know, that's about it, really. Mm -hmm. I don't I don't know, I don't think it'll joggle anybody's mind too much. It's not that, you know, mind-bending of a thing. It's just mm -hmm. pretty and it's a nice record. And yeah. I think it's, I think, you know, there's probably, some people who wish will wish that I busted out and made more wacky guitar sounds. I'm th sure there's people who, you know, will think that some of the love songs are horseshit. But you know, <laughs> those, well, love songs are horseshit. <laughs> Doing those kind of songs, now, what's that like? Is it, it the, the songs are a little more, a little more somber and a little less whimsical? You can say is that. Kind of yeah, they're not really mean? love songs, truly. They're whimsical. Some of them are, you know, Here Comes Forever is really kind of for my daughter and my girlfriend. Yeah. It's kind of funny, but, you know, uh, um, I'm sorry, could you? Let's, just don't think talk about the guitar, because how beautiful the guitar is. I remember back at probably like Morocco, we were talking about your classical guitar training and how your guitar work was getting so intricate back then. That's something you've always kind of worked on and kind of culminate with some of the stuff you're doing on this? Yeah, the guitar is that's it's another thing you always wrestle with. It's kind of like golf or something yeah. like that. You know, you just can't you can't put it down. You get bad at it. And you're never getting good enough at it. It's, it's always just messing with it. Stuff that nobody hears but me. I don't think. Mm -hmm. You know, some people might, but I the stuff that I'm and and then other people make it look so easy. Other I've never felt like a very good guitar player. So I will always wrestle with it. Mm -hmm. If someone would have told you back in the... So I'm a terrible singer, terrible singer. and a mediocre guitar player, and I write horseshit songs. That'll be our tease at the top of the show. Right? <laughs> we'll beep it out. <laughs> Who's this guy? Oh, horseshit. Right, you can't say horseshit. No, but most of it. Most of it. I know, but we're tape. We're to tape. Horse pucky. <laughs> Road apple ballads. There you go. <laughs> if this kind of music, if you were, if you were to know you were going to be recording this kind of album, you know, 15 years ago, would, was this a goal, or you would have thought never? Uh, <clears throat> I wish I had. You know, that's all. I yeah. can't. I don't think it was. Yeah, I would. Yeah, I would. I wouldn't have thought never because I kind of knew Pete. Well, it's getting to be about 15 years ago, yeah. and uh, there's like, we cut a song with him called uh, "That's How It Goes" on Forbidden Places, mm -hmm. that took us about two minutes to do with a drum machine because Derek had already gone home and. The president of the company said, "Where's my little ballad?" And you know, he's, so we cut that. And I knew we could do something like that, you know. Mm -hmm. I, but I didn't visualize it. I knew we could do stuff like that. We could always play country music, and we could always play or the Meat Puppets. Could, you know? I didn't. I I I knew that I knew that 
No, I didn't visualize it. <laughs> I, I couldn't have, no. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I, you know, I just, I, I had this really insane addiction to electric guitar and just, you know, just flipping out on the electric guitar. It's like, you know, bass jumping or something for me. Mm -hmm. That must still be part of you somewhere, obviously, right? I'm hoping. I haven't played the electric in more than a year. Yeah. Well, I mean, on the record, I played it a little bit. It's a blast. It's just so much easier than that dog. <laughs> is, there, is there a yearning ever just to get crazy with electric guitar again and do that kind of show and be in that, and be in that place? Not again? right now. Yeah. No, not yet. I have to take. I'm learning. I <clears throat> I always wished I could do that. I always saw other people do it. Well, not a lot of them, but you know, be able to have a kind of a career where you could go back and forth. And I don't know if I'll be able to do that or not. You know. Uh, logistically, you know, it just, just all depends on you know, whether or not I can't really play electric without a band. Mm -hmm. And I don't really feel like having a band like that right now. I mean, it's, it, it takes a toll. There's, a, you know, when you play rock music like that, that's really, after a while, you start to see the difference between this and that. The rock thing is dangerous. It makes hysteria. You, doing that live on tour like that, it draws a, a really strange energy and it's beautiful and it's addictive and it's necessary in a lot of ways i think people if they show that they you know turn up in droves and go crazy over loud music but th uh, when you're doing it you can really see it's it, you know i like to 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 always retreat when i get off the road and just i don't go to clubs i can't handle it mm -hmm. and the energy is like okay i've had enough for a while this doesn't have that same element the acoustic sets don't bring hysteria. They don't bring, you know, as much of a, of a, what can I get my hands on attitude sort of a thing, you know, like that everybody's into. It's just like, okay, I'm, I just pulled all my hair out watching a rock show and now I'm going to get drunk and then, you know, who knows what. Woohoo! Uh, Do you enjoy the notion that you could be more of a, this kind of singer songwriter, troubadour kind of guy from, here on out, many years of doing these kind of records. And That'd be nice. It'd be great to do this. If, if it, you know, when I'm when I'm doing it, it kind of feels the same. I mean, singing is singing. The guitar playing is ancillary to that, and the singing is the part that I'm really after. Mm -hmm. You know, I really really like it when my all of a sudden, about halfway through the show, my throat opens up, and I'm just it just feels like there's a channel going all of a sudden. You know, things are going right, mm -hmm. and uh, so <clears throat> and this is a really good venue to sing. Uh, yeah. The, with the acoustic, it's a really, really great forum for that. So, mm -hmm. you know, I'm having a blast doing it. And it would be great to be able to have sort of like a, you know, a, I always envied James Taylor. I always thought he was a great guitar player. I think he's he, he's written some good songs. But I just love the fact that he could stand up there. Here I have to go up and turn myself inside out to please people, and you know, and, and then here's he's just an example too of people who can stand there, and and do what just do what they're do what they've written and play an acoustic and just. It's a mellow gig, and you're like, oh, and people like that too. Unbelievable, you know. And and uh, you know, I just wished I, I always wished I could have satisfied myself that way or gotten to it. And now I'm kind of getting there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's kind of just happening to be. Yeah. How satisfied are you with the songwriting? Because these songs are great. You know, you can still be writing or writing better songs than you ever have. Is that is that a kick? Knowing you can. Yeah, yeah. I'm able to kind of distance myself from stuff and and and. I've had moments like that before, but I'm not writing from the cuff as much. Where I'm kind of going like, okay, this I, I want to write this kind of song, you know, like this is this, something like, uh, or I'll write something for somebody else, and I'm getting more successful at that, and then do it myself. Mm -hmm. You know, like, mm -hmm. here comes forever. I wrote it because I I thought Willie Nelson could do it. I thought it would be good for him, yeah. and then I started doing it because. I gave it to his cousin to give to him, and I think he probably threw it in the toilet. <laughs> I don't know about Chris, but is Derek heard this? Have you, sent this? have you sent this record to Derek? Is anyone out? Have you... No, I don't think uh, I have. I don't know that I. I don't know that he's listened to any of the stuff that I've done yeah. since you know, or if he'd care to. Yeah. You know, um, he might like this one. You know, but uh, and I don't know. Uh, I don't know my brother's address, so mm -hmm. I don't know. It'd be nice to, to hear a little feedback from those guys, but in a lot of ways, I don't really care what they think either. Mm -hmm. You know, I don't really care. I just care that people like it. You know, yeah. that's all. If people, I like, I, I like to hear more from people. You know, that, that I don't know as well, mm -hmm. too, and you know, 
fans, that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. Well, the fan reaction to some of them when you were doing this a couple of years back was just tremendous, at least the shows I was at. And it must feel really different to kind of have that plate of applause and be in that kind of show. And when you first started doing that, was that like, wow, this is a whole other yeah, world? It's, yeah, it's strange. I mean, I still, I say, I, I like doing it, but I have a side of me too that I could never figure out what people see in it either. You know, because we started doing it, playing music when we were teenagers at parties, you know, as a, going out to play. Mm -hmm. And, you know, everybody was just getting messed up and, you know, partying. And we'd play in the middle of it and we'd go out to boondockers and play. And it wasn't like a, a um, it wasn't something where you were, where the goal was like applause and money and stuff. I mean, we were just part of this party th mm -hmm. thing. It was more like what a rave would be or something like that. And then it kind of turned into, oh, we can do this at punk rock shows, and people will give us money for it. And, uh, and then you gauge your potential for money by the noise they make. And you know, pretty soon, it's, it's like you know, you're up and running, and you're off the ground, and riding your own ticket to Hollywood. And it's, it's, you know, it, that was unintentional. It was just like, yeah. so. It's, pr it's, it's pretty weird that you play something as modest as some of these are when I just play them by myself. Mm -hmm. Something that's just, you know, a gut bucket song and just just simple as can be. And then people will start to raise the roof up afterwards. And you just go, well, there's no accounting for taste. <laughs> your, your, your band, the fact that you started like that, like you say, and now your album covers are behind glass at like the Experience Music Project in Seattle. And what's that like to, re to reach that kind of legendary status. How much that do you even see from where you stand or kind of privy to? I wish that it brought more political power and clout. And I, I wish that it, I wish that it, um, that uh, now I, you know, it's pretty, it's pretty nice. It's cool. I, I, I get it. You know, I don't, I don't go around feeling it. It doesn't elate me. It mm -hmm. doesn't blow up my head at all. I actually feel cr cr as crummy about myself as most people do, you know. That's, I think that's pretty common. I worry about what I look like to others, you know. I fret and fuss about stuff, and and then every once in a while I realize that I'm off the hook because I'm a hero, and I'm wonderful, and there's nobody like me. <laughs> and All those giants you talked about slaying, though, is that kind of thing, do you feel like that over with, though, in terms of certain ways, and in terms of you're, you're kind of at a Replacing well, this was one. Going. Yeah, this is one of the last ones. Like, I've done a lot of stuff, and it's not like, okay, you know, I've done it all or anything. But I've done a lot of different kinds of records, and I've had a, a, a really, um, I, the way I like to put it is, I'm pretty self-requited. My ego has been stroked a bunch. I got to write a lot. I produced. I got to have a taste of fame, you know, enough for me, and uh, of all of that stuff, <clears throat> and uh, to where. But it's, I'm never quite satisfied either. I, there's something else will come up, I'll get another idea <clears throat> or something. But this is definitely like, well, OK. I didn't even think, that, think of it in terms of that. Like, this album is going to be like, oh, now, now I have this really cool, balanced collection of things. And what will come next? I, uh, <clears throat> I was talking to Boo Bernstein the other day about it. And I said, well, I made a really good album. Now the, only, the next recourse is to get sick again. You know, it'll have to be sick because this is, you know, and that was kind of like an off the cuff, like uh, blah, 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 my mouth is just talking thing because I don't know what, it, what it'll be. It's just that sense of kind of, 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 uh, of satisfaction that I got off of this one has made it kind of, it's made me kind of childlike again. It's going to take me a couple of years to grow another brain. But it is kind of like a new beginning, though, in a good way, that kind of thing you're talking about, right? Like, oh, yeah, yeah, it's more. awesome. It's yeah. awesome, because I know I don't, you know, all, 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 the, all the stuff is done, all my worries are kind of manufactured and stuff like that. It's a, it's a really, really nice feeling. I can just put the record on and go, oh, that's, yeah, it's okay, it's done. You did a record. But these are, I, going back to the stuff that I said, the ego stuff, this is what I'm talking about. This ego stuff is just crazy, you know, it's just what it, what, how this does it. It's a lot like doing a painting show for me. I just can't be one of the, you know, it's like a, a band is almost like a sports team. I go, yeah, <laughs> you know, and it's just every, everything's fine. This is mm -hmm. way more mental. Mm -hmm. and I'm, uh, I'm uh, you know, I'm used to a lot, used to attention and stuff like that. But, um, and also, you know, kind of, uh, we're living in times that are like, you've got to 
watch your P's and Q's more and more and more and looking around and uh oh, you know? It's just like, you know something? I'm a bad person, a seriously sick, bad person, and nobody should like what I do. And I'm just trying to get ahead of the whole game because I'm wrong, and everything I do is wrong, and it sucks, and it's stupid, and I should be arrested. So I'm like way out in front with my attitude, right? <laughs> kind of no way to look at that. <laughs> Talk about your artwork, actually, but what just the last thing. How, you know, how often do you paint, and how much is that still part of your life? I, I paint all the time, you know, I just doodle, and uh, I've always got a couple of works in progress, and always just trying to figure out what color to put on next. Sometimes, you know, I'll have something sitting up for months. I just can't figure out what color to paint that shoe or whatever. It's just, it's maddening. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'll sit and I'll look at it and look at it and go away and come back and I just, I'll stall over color choice. But I do a lot of it. Mm -hmm. Looking back, what are just, just one of the greatest moments you ever look back and think about some of just the wildest rock and roll moments you ever had where things were just perfect and man, this was it. Is there certain moments you look back and think, that's what it's all about? Yeah, I, I dove off the stage at the Whiskey one time, and there was about 30 people in the audience, and I dove into an area where there was nobody, and I just landed on my shoulder and knocked myself out, and, and it hurt really bad, and I, just, and I was just like, yep, <laughs> I, I finally made it. And I was like probably 24 or something. Yeah. You know, I thought that was pretty cool at the time. <laughs> I was like, woohoo! <laughs> I saw you something similar in Santa Cruz, actually. Really? Yeah. I mean, I remember that one because it hurt. I've jumped yeah. off the stage a lot. Mm -hmm. and a lot of times, you, usually people would get you, you know, and then, they, then it became a sport, mm -hmm. crowd surfing or whatever. But we used to do it before it was a sport. It was yeah. just, you know, dive off the stage just because, you know, your band has run amok, and that's why people come to see you. Right. And uh, I think I got it off of Devo. I saw uh, Bob One come out and get up on a little cocktail table and just totally flip out until the cocktail table went phew, and he just like, <laughs> like a backflip, you know, and just sprawled. It was amazing. <laughs> and, uh, he was jamming the whole time. It's just like unbelievable. <laughs> you know? There were some times when Buddies and I were in the front row at some of your shows where we got a little scared. That we were going to fly into the audience. You guys get a little close in your own world, and it made it part of the fun, but you never know what was going to happen. Oh, yeah. yeah. I got, I've, I've been taken out so many times by the bass player or whatever, just bing, you just stars, blood everywhere, you know, or like somebody slams the microphone and it's right here and they slam the mic stand and it just goes bang. I mean, it's like a mallet hitting you in the face, right. you know, and your eyes are closed. You're like going, stay away to heaven, boing, you know, and it's insane, you know, you get, get hurt. I come off stage so many times and I'm caught like pretty good or something, and I have no idea how I did it. You know, my pants would be cut. It's like, is this a broken bottle on the stage or something? Or what, you know, or? I remember worried about you one day because there was blood involved, and I remember looking at my buddy, oh, jeez. Yeah. Everything turned out all right. Yeah. <laughs> Congratulations on this. Thank you. Really, really nice record. Yeah.